Hello, this is Pat Cahill from Pat Cahill Metalworks. Welcome back. So today I thought I'd make a sword ring. This is a cavalry saber style of sword and I have drawn out the outline of it so I can cut around and I'm measuring it the length and in millimeters or millimeters it's 68 millimeters and I know that the depth is 1.6 millimeter I'm using this 12 millimeter low dome wire and I know the height of it is 1.6 millimeters so that's going to give me a ring size of about 10 and a half so it's nice to have these little books and all I'll sort of plug this one this is the jeweler's bench reference by Harold O'Connor and I think it's still available it's got all sorts of neat little charts and stuff that uh, you might not think you need right away but it comes in handy, it comes in very handy so nice little def desk reference or a bench reference for us okay so I think I'll start out by sawing out the piece and again I'll cut and bring you back when it has been sawed all the way around. So let me do that and I'll bring you back. Idea what just flew by. <laughs> um, maybe I should look on the floor. Eh, I'll worry about that later. So we have the outline of the sword now, and the next thing we want to do is cut out the handle. So that's should be quite easy. First, you just want to drill out a hole. I'll just put a center punch, and I don't put it anywhere near the line. Some people like to uh, drill right near the line and use that. Um, I don't myself like to do that, so I do it quite a ways away, like right in the middle. You can see the little punch hole now. And let me get set up with a drill bit, and I'll drill a hole there, and I'll bring it back, and when I'm piercing it out, okay. Okay, so we have a hole drilled out, and now we're ready to pierce out that portion. And to do that, one just uh, threads it through your saw blade through the hole. Put it up to the top so it's not stressing on the saw blade at all. The saw blade back in the holder. Push it up against your breastplate to Get it in there good. Oh yeah. You can also like hear a nice sound if you have it in there nice and tight. You wouldn't hear your saw blades not in there nice and tight. So then we just go around and pierce out that portion of the sword ring. slowly getting close to the edge where I want to be. I'm not going straight in there. Just there we're at it now. And if you need to see you need to see really well the edge, which I don't really you can use a brush and it just clears off that those bits of silver. If you have to err on any one side, err on the side of taking off sawing too little because you can always file or sand out the portion 
that you need later on. But you, you can't put silver back on. I guess you could try to solder something, but that wouldn't work in this case. So. It sounds like I'm speeding up to go around the corner, but really what I'm doing is just a lot less tension, a lot less pressure on, on the sword, the sword, the, the saw, so I can slowly turn the blade and follow the outline of the portion I want to pierce out. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Let me um, get that done and I'll bring you back. Okay, so we have it all sawed out and pierced. And I'll just take the, the thing off now. Doesn't really help me anymore. There it is. And now what we want to do is take care of our edges. So we want to file and sand them nice and smooth. And then we're worried about, then we'll start to worry about the, uh, the blade side. But I'm going to get all those file marks out. Not file marks. I'm putting file marks in there right now. Take, we'll get rid of the saw marks first and then we'll get rid of the file marks. Good. Keep it nice and straight. Because that's the type of sword it is. I think. I'm no expert at swords, but it is kind of fun making these. More than just a little fun, it just it's very fun. I like doing it. Here. You actually should use the biggest file that you can comfortably use at all times. Okay, so that side looks good. And let's work on the, the blade side. As with my last video, I guess my last video was the, uh, the pendant was going to be a, a tie bar, but it was turned out to be a, a pendant, and it was a Chinese war sword, or Dido um, sword. This is also a one-bladed sword. It doesn't have an edge on both sides, but only one side. All I'm doing right now again is just taking out the saw marks. Just smoothing it, keeping it nice and flat. So let me finish that all the way around and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I'm going to continue to take out the saw marks and then the file marks with sandpaper and I'll do that all the way around and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so we're almost done with the sanding. Last little part I always try to get inside every little nook and cranny and make sure that it's nice and all smooth surface. Again, I'm using these fabric sanding strips and they're really really good because they allow you to get into all these places that you would never be able to access normally. Okay, so we're all set. Again when I use them I use this um, little bench vise to uh, allow it to hold it nice and steady for me to do the sanding work. Okay, so let's bring the camera back down to the um, bench pin. 
and get rid of this. And our next step is to um, make the blade portion. So I'll put it in the holder. Get out a nice wide file and then file all the way down. Even strokes. Using your bench pin as a surface that you can hold it up against to get a good filing on that. The only thing again to watch out here is that sure the start of your blade is even all the way across. So you can see that's the start of it now. And I'll continue this off camera. And bring you back when it's done. Okay, so it's basically done. And our next step is to uh, work on the hand grip. And as before, I'm going to saw that. Saw little indentations in it. You can actually also um, use files. You can file it in there too. And maybe just to show you that way. I'll do it that way this time. Now this one's a little tricky because you don't want to you don't want to be touching the bottom. So the best thing to do is just make your little saw marks or sorry, file marks just on the top. Here I'm using a, a square saw. Here I'm using a square file. And again, trying to make them even. And again, slightly at an angle. Because typically when you see the wraps, they're not going straight across, they're wrapping upward to the end. Okay, so this is just on this side. Now we'll do it on the other edge. And then we'll bring them in to join each other. And it'd be nice if I, I'm going to try to get some way of holding this. This is it's kind of difficult. Maybe if I was left-handed, I could do it. Uh, but let me bring you back when I got that set up. All right, so just again, on the other side, trying to bring these two together so that you have wrapped on both sides. And right now what I'm using is a, a round file. this up. It's a little awkward. Awkward. Just there's no real great way of placing this and again I'm being very careful not to touch this portion of the the handle. So okay so we're back. That's done I cleaned it up a bit. So that's that. That's basically our sword. You can do a lot more, put a lot more detail into it. You can put a fuller going down the, the top portion of the sword itself. 
you could add something, but let's keep it simple. So what we next what we need to do next is actually solder the two ends. And you don't really need to make it round, but I'll start out with them rounding it a bit. Because we're gonna we're gonna bang it round when we get to the end. And yeah, I know you can't see this, but I'm just putting it on a ring manual. Sort of bringing it around. And so what we want is our ends to sit nice and tight against each other. So let's bring that down, making our D shape, getting ready to solder it. Okay. Take your time on this portion of it. I don't know why I'm hurrying. I want it to look nice. It will. Also, don't worry. Although I, I was starting to make it round in the beginning, don't worry about that. That will come. I think that looks good. Doesn't look good now, but it will look good when it's ready. You want to, you want to get these nice and flat on the inside. So I am going to hammer it a little bit here, so that these two portions are sitting. The bottom half is sitting flat. You don't want to have a ridge where you have your finger. See it. I think I'm all set. You can look at it, you can see that it's... Yeah. You can see that it's... One side is not above the other. Okay, so we're ready to solder it. So I'll bring you back, I'll get the soldering station up and bring you back when I'm ready to do that. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we're ready to solder. Put a little flux on it. I have it in this little magnesium block just so I can squish it in there and make it sit nice and tight. Put our piece of solder on. Heat yeah. it up slowly, the whole thing. Of course, I'm using hard solder, best match. And there we go. Now we have any blobs, we can clean them up later. Okay, so let's put that in the quench and then the pickle and I'll be back. Okay, we're back. So Next thing to do is to round it out and use a soft hammer. So I'm going to get my raw hide.
tension. You won't be able to see this. I don't Pin out of the way. All right. right. There you have it. Nice ring. Kind of fits me. I can see there's a solder blob here. We're not going to take care of that, so. Best way to do that is get it on a nice firm surface and take your smaller files and just remove that. Carefully remove that without trying to remove any, any other part of the surface. We're going to polish this next, so. That looks pretty good. Take it off. Get down here. You don't want a nasty solder blob. Okay. So, next we want to put it on the ring polish and spindle. And we'll bring you over to the buffer and we'll polish it up. Let me get that set up. Okay, so that's our that's our uh, our ring, sort of a sword ring or saber ring. Where it comes in again, it's hard to show all the good angles, but it's pretty cool. I mean, I make a pretty nice ring. Not too bad, not too bad, not too hard to make. And as I said before, you can put a lot more detail into this. And this can be worn anywhere. Actually, it might be a really nice thumb ring, but I'd have to be quite a bit bigger for my thumb. So there you have it. Again, I want to thank you for watching. And I'll hope to see you again soon. Bye.